Our lesson this evening as we study the mission and call of Moses is from the third and fourth chapters of Exodus. We begin at the first verse of that third chapter. Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of the bush. And he looked and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called him out of the bush, Moses, Moses. And he said, here I am. Then God said, come no closer, remove the sandals from your feet for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. He said further, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I've observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their sufferings, and I've come down to deliver them from the Egyptians and to bring them out of the land to a good land, broad, land flowing with milk and honey, to the country of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. The cry of the Israelites has now come to me. I have also seen how the Egyptians oppressed them. So come, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? And God said, I will be with you, and this shall be the sign for you that, that, is, that is that I who sent you, when I have brought you your people out of Egypt, you shall worship God on his mountain. But Moses said, if I come to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your ancestors has sent me, and they ask me, what is his name? What shall I tell them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. And further, thus you shall say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, thus you shall say to the Israelites, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this is my title for all generations. But then Moses answered, But suppose they do not believe me or listen to me, but say, The Lord did not appear to you. And the Lord said to him, What is in your hand, Moses? And he said, A staff. And he said, Throw it on the ground. So he threw it on the ground, and it became a snake, and Moses drew back from it. Then the Lord says to Moses, reach out your hand and seize it by the tail. So he reached out his hand and grasped it, and it became a staff in his hand. So that they may believe that the Lord, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, has indeed appeared to you. Again the Lord said to him, put your hand inside your cloak. He put his hand inside his cloak and he took it out and his hand was leprous, as white as snow. Then God said, put your hand back in your cloak and he put it in his cloak. And when he took it out again, it had been restored like the rest of his body. If they will not believe you or heed the fire sign, they may believe the second sign. If they do not believe even those two signs or heed you, you shall take some water from the Nile and pour it on the ground, and the water that you shall take from the Nile will become blood on the dry ground. But Moses said to the Lord, Oh, my Lord, I have never been eloquent, neither in the past nor even now, and you have spoken to me and to your servant, but I am slow of speech and slow of tongue. 
Then the Lord said to him, Moses, who gives speech to mortals? Who makes them mute or deaf, seeing or blind? Is it not I, the Lord? Now go, and I will be with you, and your mouth will, and I will teach you what to speak. But he said, Oh, my Lord, please send someone else. Then the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses, and he said, What of your brother Aaron, the Levite? I know that he can speak fluently. Even now he is coming to see out, of the, out to meet you. And when he sees you, his heart will be glad. You shall speak to him and put the words in his mouth, and I will be with your mouth and with his mouth, and will teach you what you shall do. He indeed shall speak for you to the people, he shall serve as a mouth for you, and you shall serve as God for him. Take in your hand this staff, take it with you, which will perform the signs. So Moses went back to his father-in-law Jethro, and he said to him, Please let me go back to my kindred in Egypt and see whether they are still living. And Jethro said, Go in peace. Here ends the reading for the day. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Who am I? Moses must have shouted it out. Who am I to go to, to Pharaoh and to the Israelites? Moses has been on the lamb for 40 years. He killed an Egyptian. He's under a death sentence in Egypt. His picture must have been in every Egyptian post office all over the country. And God says, go talk to Pharaoh. Right. It's like Noah being told to build an ark in his driveway. You remember that story. <laughs> Who am I? Moses says. Both to go to Pharaoh, but also to go to the Israelites. Remember, there are two audiences here. Not one, two there's the issue of Pharaoh, but Moses has to go back to Egypt and convince the Israelites that they should follow him into the Sinai. He's got to go through the infrastructure of whatever, because he has no authority. The question is as relevant to the Israelites as this to Pharaoh. Who am I to go to the Israelites? Who am I to go to Pharaoh? And God says, well, I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and you will go. But Moses says, but if I go and I say that the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob has talked to me, and they ask me, oh, really? What's his name? What am I to tell them? And God says, I am who I am. And when we read that, you and I think, boy, that isn't much of an answer, is it? Well, except it's the verb to be. You know, there's something about us and about everything else in creation. We are either have been or shall be, but we're not am. We're not here forever. We're not here eternally. God is here forever. God says, you can tell him, I am is my name. I am is my name, and I am the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. That is my name, that is my title for all generations. So there. So then Moses says, but what happens if I go and they don't believe me? They say to me, you haven't spoken to God. And God says, what are you carrying in your hand? He sits a stick. Throw it on the ground. He throws it on the ground. It becomes a serpent. Moses starts to run away. And God says, hold on, Moses. Reach down and pick it up by the tail. If I had been Moses now, this is where the story would have stopped. <laughs> he says, pick it up by the tail, Moses. And Moses picks it up by the tail and it becomes a rod again. And then he says, put your hand in your cloak. And he does. And he takes it out. And it's as white as snow. It's leprous. And he puts it back in and takes it out again and it's clean. And God says, if they won't believe the rod and they won't believe the hand, then take some water out of the Nile and pour it on the ground. And when it becomes dry, it'll become blood. So Moses says, 
for God. Notice, in fact, if you read the story for yourself, it's but, 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 but. I know people like that too. And Moses said, but God, I don't speak very well. I'm slow of tongue. I'm slow of speech. And you know that. You've talked to me for years. And God says, wait a minute, Moses. Is it not I that makes men dumb? Or is it not I that makes them speak? Is it not I that makes them see? Is it not I that makes them not see? So Moses then says, can't you just find somebody else? Most of these things, with proper amendments, can be heard in our hallway anytime we're inviting somebody to do something at Good Shepherd. Can't you just find somebody else? Or I don't have the skills for it. Oh, I don't need to go back. You can do that yourself. Five however, for Moses, very legitimate questions. What do we take from all this? Well, first of all, first of all, we, we take the fact that God, God has heard the sufferings of people and God is going to deliver them. God says, I've come down. One translation says, I, I with my own arm, will deliver them. Now, Moses, you go see Pharaoh. It always seems to work that way. Jesus says in the Gospels, I have compassion on the crowd. They've been with us all day. Then he turns to the disciples and said, you give them something to eat. I have the compassion. You get the food. And of course, they tell him, you know, the 7-Elevens are closed. The 200 denarii would not buy enough food. They go through all the reasons why it won't work. But somehow God takes in Christ's name, the five loaves and the two fish, and it does work, and there are 12 baskets left, all this kind of thing. And Moses finally does what he's being asked to do, and the same thing happens. God does this awesome, unbelievable thing of taking the children of Israel out of Egypt for all the suggestions, and more about that next week. In fact, more about that in two weeks by the outline of where we're going. First, we've got to deal with Pharaoh. But that's next week, too. What do we take from it tonight? Number one, God is always at work doing the things that God does for the welfare of his people. That includes us. We're never out of the vision and the concern and the purposes of God. The second thing we need to take home tonight is that this is the whole issue of vocation, that the things we are called to do, we're called to do in partnership with God. We're not asked to do them alone, and we wonder whether we have the tools to do them, just as Moses wondered. But we are called to do the things God wills to be done, and we're the agents for God to do them. St. Augustine used to say, without God we cannot, but without us God does not. So today, in Exodus 3 and 4, it's Moses' turn. And Moses sounds like all the rest of us, but God, but God, but God. But the final line is, God works through us to work redemption in the world. It's a great lesson on Christian vocation. We don't have a job, we have a calling. We don't have a job, we have an opportunity to work with God, to use the skills, whether we, whether we are school teachers or secretaries or church janitors or maybe even an occasional pastor, who knows? we have the opportunity of being partners with God. I mentioned the story, five barley loaves, two fish. One of the Gospels tells us there was a little boy that had the five barley loaves and two fish. 
And by the way, those barley loaves are not loaves of bread like we get nicely sliced in a plastic bag. They look like small Peters, only smaller. They were not much more than a, than a cookie in size. Five barley loaves and two fish. But I have a little, it's not in the scripture, it's just my own crazy imagination. What happened when that day was over? The kid is given his lunch. Twelve baskets of leftovers have been taken. And he goes home. Can you imagine this kitchen door slamming shut as he swings through it saying, Mom, guess what Jesus and I did today? <laughs> well, that's what Moses learned. That's what we learned from this lesson as it continues to unfold. And that's what it means for us. Everything in this life is an opportunity for us to use God's gifts for God's purposes. Amen. I invite you to stand and join me in the Latin affirmation. We believe in God, the maker of all things, source of all life.